On the docket tonight, ASU professor June Suk Che was reported missing on March 25, 2020, after he didn't return home from work. Months later, his body was discovered in an Arizona landfill. Now, two teaching teenagers have been charged with his death. Our affiliate KNXV has the story tonight. Deputies spending hours combing through the trash at Northwest Regional Landfill off 195th Avenue and Deer Valley in surprise. MCSO says strong evidence led homicide detectives here on March 29th, just four days after their investigation began. We're just digging around the spots where they think it, the professor is. That's a landfill employee who asked to remain anonymous. He also says detectives must have an idea of where in the valley the body came from and on what day based on their targeted searching. So his truck is tracked on the dumpings and everything they put it in a log. And after months of searching, MCSO has found the remains of missing ASU professor Jun Suk Che. MCSO spent more than $300,000 in 7,200 man hours searching for Che's body. Several ASU students telling me they were told their professor, who has the same name, went missing in March and was later replaced. Now, Professor Che teaches several engineering courses at ASU and is involved in several research projects on brain and lung functions, even creating a wireless prototype for safer brain implants. He also holds four patents and has his own book. Professor was reported missing at the end of March. His car tracked to Shreveport, Louisiana. That's where officers questioned Javian Izell and Gabriel Austin, both 18 years old. Investigators say Che was killed near Carefree Highway and 7th Street. His body put in a dumpster that was then emptied into the Northwest Regional Landfill. Both of those teenagers are in a valley jail on a million dollars bond each. No word at this hour on a motive. While family and friends want justice, it won't bring the professor back. An ASU coworker telling me he was an incredibly kind man, a brilliant mind, and will be missed by everyone he knew. All right, still with me, trial attorney Ann Bremner, former police lieutenant and trial attorney Rick King, and criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, and law professor at Sec Texas Southern University, Michael Sterling. Rick, I want to start with you because at the beginning of the year, we had this discussion about the trials of the year, and I, I picked this as one of them, and the reason I did was because it really um, stuck out to me as a tragic sign of the times. What he was really doing was he was trolling the Internet for connections, and he connected with this girl, and ultimately this is what ended up happening. They don't really know what happened in that confrontation, but at the end of the day, that's how they got connected, or at least that's what prosecutors allege. So I'd just love to get your thoughts about what, what jumps out to you about this particular case. You know, as you talked about trolling the Internet for connections, that and you're and Michael, you're absolutely right. That is the the state of where we are in making connections. I guess we say these days, um, and it's a tragedy. And I remember we recently covered another story on the internet about or about making a connection on the internet and meeting someone and that turning into a tragic death of someone. Um, this is a uh, this is a, a the tragic death of a what appears to be a brilliant man, brilliant professor, um, and. His uh, death will certainly be um, mourned by his loved ones and family and, st and students at the college. Um, but it is just a it's another marker of how we're how we are moving in away from a more personal into a computerized type life. Yeah, and, and sometimes with tragic results. I mean, more and more, we're yes. seeing that. The case we're talking about was Andrew Warner out of Florida, uh, who was given the death penalty for his crime. He was a friend right. of a girl who connected with a guy on some dating app. Right. She decides to go on the date, but only really to check out what he has, goes back, gets him, they end up killing him. All right, yeah. Ann Bremner, right. Um, love to get your thoughts on this case. Again, a, a tragic sign of the times or, or something else. Well, I think it's both. I mean, it's tragic side of the times, and I, I agree completely with Rick with, with you know, the whole thing. We're losing all these connections. We're con connecting on the Internet, you know, and, and then you end up with things like this. But, but, the, but the other thing about it is we've always had these horrible crimes where someone's duped or cajoled or, you know, brought into a situation because they're a good person and they want to connect with somebody, and then they get taken advantage of. And it's, it's always been there. But it just you just multiply it exponentially when you have the ability to connect on, on the Internet and to lure people like this apparently wonderful individual and, and brilliant professor 
uh, to his death under the guise, it looks like, of a robbery. Yeah, I think that's what it was. And Michael Sterling, uh, these young people, were apparently a, a couple living on the fringes of society. Again, I, and again, the reason why I picked this as one of the trials of the year is because, again, this is going to show us what's happening to our young people as well. The fact that they consider the Internet a way to get money, earn money in this way. Um, but ultimately, they, they decided to live on the fringes of society and, and what's going on with our young people as well. Yeah, Michael, I mean, you know, it's uh, this is just a it's a tragic event all the all the way around. Right. Uh, a, br a brilliant professor tragically lost his life. Uh, all the empirical data suggests that over the last year and a half, we've seen uh, dramatic increases uh, in uh, anti-Asian violence. Uh, and Professor Che is, is, is one of those victims, unfortunately. Uh, and, and then you look at, you know, these two young people whose, you know, lives were, are going to be forever marred, who could have made different decisions. Uh, who, who could have had their futures in front of them, who with a little guidance and a little help maybe could have been on a different path, but instead chose the path of violence uh, and chose the path of murder. Uh, uh, you know, they're, at least they're accused of doing so. And so, yeah, it just it, it demonstrates, you know, that, that over certainly over over the last, you know, you know, year or so, we've seen increases in violence around the country during the COVID, you know, 19 pandemic. Uh, and this is this is a furtherance of, of that increase in violence. And it's just it's just really, really unfortunate and really sad. No question. And, and last question, you know, when I look at that couple there alleged to have committed this crime, I thought for sure at some point one of them might turn on the other. Are you surprised that hasn't happened? I uh uh, yeah, I am. And I was just thinking to myself, going back to like Charlie Starkweather, you know, we looked at him with Carol Fugate in the, I think, 1958, you know, those two natural born killers. Yeah. I mean, there were mm -hmm. couples like this a very long time ago, but they were so stunningly unreal. And, and it's such an anomaly that, that, that it, they, they made history. Of course, now we see it all the time. No turning. Maybe she's afraid of it. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe she's just a natural born killer and she doesn't care. But she's not doing it, and I don't expect that she will. I don't know what you think, but I, I don't know that she ever will. Yeah, I'm not sure. If it hasn't happened yet, I'm not sure it will. And right. I'm not even sure if it's crime imitating art or art imitating crime. Right, All right. exactly. We're going to take a break right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are tracking this case right here at Court TV. There will be a pretrial conference on August 16th, and the trial is set to begin August 31st.